first tonight. You can't have failed to notice that this year Britain is celebrating the bicentenary of Charles Dickens. But I'd like to call your attention to the 200th birthday of another equally remarkable Victorian, the architect and designer Augustus Pugin, the man at the centre of the 19th century Gothic revival. I've been to visit Pugin's house in Ramsgate to find out more about this extraordinary, visionary man. As night fell on September the 10th, 1852, a man was bundled onto a train at Waterloo, headed for Ramsgate in Kent. Prone to violent physical fits and psychotic visions, he'd been heavily sedated with chloroform to stop him lashing out at other passengers. He'd just been sprung from bedlam by his wife Jane. A pauper's hospital for the insane, she'd decided, was no place for her husband to spend his last days. It was time to bring him home. That man was none other than Augustus Pugin, now regarded as one of the greatest architects of the Victorian age. But by the time of his death in 1852, not only was he quite insane, he was also a man whose work was destined to become hopelessly unfashionable for more than a century. And I think Pugin can still seem rather difficult. He's a typical Victorian, tub-thumping, moralising evangelist. It's quite hard to get to know. I'm hoping that by visiting the house that he built for himself, I can get an insight into some of the more intimate aspects of his personality. As a devout Catholic convert, Pugin's mission in life had been to convert Britain back to a pre-Reformation medieval haven where Gothic architecture would be a moral force for good. And Ramsgate, his home for many years, had been the place above all where he dreamed his neo-Gothic dream. Within three days of being brought back to Ramsgate by Jane, Pugin was dead. He was just 40 years old and he left behind a young wife whom he adored as well as eight children. Many believe his death was caused simply by overwork. In the course of his short life, he designed no fewer than 86 buildings. Others think it was caused by the mercury that he took for his failing eyesight, possibly a symptom of syphilis. But Jane's heroic efforts in getting him out of the hell hole that was Bedlam weren't entirely in vain. Thanks to her, he was able at least to die in peace, surrounded by his family, in the place that he loved most of all. This handsome family house, with Catholic church attached, was built by Pugin in 1844 and was his pride and joy. All his architectural and spiritual ideals went into this one building. Until a few years ago, the Grange, like Pugin's reputation at the time of his death, was in a pretty terrible state, in danger, in fact, of being boarded up. But thankfully, the Landmark Trust stepped in to restore it just in time. So, Caroline, tell me why you think this house was, was so worthy of restoration. <laughs> well, it's a seminal building from a seminal architect. Augustus Pugin really sets the whole tone for the Gothic revival in Britain in the mid-19th century. And it's a house of incredible self-confidence, I think. You imagine you're only 30, and yet you come in, you stamp your motto, en avant, all over the walls. Forward, forward, it says. That's right. Punch, I think, said it should have been on arrière, backwards, backwards, because <laughs> he was rushing back towards the Middle Ages. And yet, at the same time, actually, En Avant was very good because this is an incredibly modern house because at the time he was building, the early 1840s, um, this kind of an entrance hall to a house was really very radical.